The Egypt that Samtik was born into was a war-torn country, ruled by foreign superpowers. Egypt had been conquered, and the Assyrians, led by the tyrant king Esarhaddon, now ruled the north. Centered around Nineveh in modern-day Iraq, their empire spread across the Middle East and deep into Egypt. Samtik grew up seeing his father subjugated by the Assyrians. For the heir to this puppet kingdom, the future looked bleak. Samtik is nothing. He's a prince, but he has no position and no power at all. But the Assyrians' desperate need for power was to be their downfall and Samtik's gain. While the Assyrians ruled the north, the south had been conquered by the Kushites. Both wanted total control of Egypt, and both eyed Thebes, now modern-day Luxor, as their capital city of choice. The Assyrian assault on Thebes was merciless. The Kushites were powerless against the savage onslaught. With Samtik's father dead, the Assyrians picked the young prince to govern Egypt. The Assyrians perhaps thought that he was just another local small-time ruler that they could keep on a leash, but they were wrong. He was really quite an innovator, and it was because he was an innovator that he was successful. The key to Samtik's early success were mercenaries or hired muscle. But these weren't just any soldiers. They were elite warriors bought in from ancient Greece. The Greek soldiers were the prime soldiers of their day in the Eastern Mediterranean. And they would have been, therefore, the most fearsome warriors that anybody would be likely to encounter. Samtik had a deadly foreign army at his disposal. He put it to work, conquering the neighboring city-states. By 651 BCE, they'd achieved their objective, and Samtik was in total control of the north. In just over a decade, the puppet ruler had become the genuine pharaoh of Lower Egypt.